I know I'm late. I've had another dust up with handicrafts. I said, no point dumping it all in, ladies. It's a well-known fact, Raffi, you don't flush. <laughs> I don't want so. Don't want no more pig ignorant pillocks barging in from judo. Right. Life. L I I F E. What is it? What you make it. It is what you make it. God can give you cardboard, but it's up to you to save up for a Stanley knife. Am I right? <laughs> Not wrong. If life gets on top of you, what do you do? Bite his ears off. Bite his ears off. Yes, you don't give in. You don't give up. If you want to be trodden on, right welcome on your ass, but don't come here. <laughs> I'm a fighter. All as I've been, all as will be. And I'm going to teach you boys to fight back. Right. Dennis, get that face up. This is God's good anagalypta. Get looking at him. <laughs> Too spotty. Spotty? Do you think I've never been spotty? I've had craters big enough to hold a Tupperware party. <laughs> I've had a back like a red van leg box. I've had spots so big, I couldn't burst them. They had to be detonated in a controlled explosion. <laughs> Anybody laughs, tweak the nose hairs. Right. Right. Dennis, did you pluck up? Did you propose? Well, I remember what you said, that loots don't matter. And at least with a face like mine, it wouldn't have all the pressures of being a top male, male model. Male model, yeah. Well, she still said no. Now, Dennis, after this class is over, I want you to get over there. Put tinsel round your private parts. <laughs> yes, stick them through the letterbox and say, Hey, up, Sandra, this is what you're missing, Chuck. Will you do that? Yeah. OK, right, now, Vaughan. Stand up for me, Vaughan, will you, please? Now, Vaughan has been coming to me now for quite some fortnights, haven't you, Vaughan? He come here. No, he crawled here. Well, you wait yourself, to be frank, didn't you, Vaughan? In fact, still a bit of a niff in the rush bottom. <laughs> he had personality problems. He had marital worries, he had trouble at work, he had mouth ulcers and he couldn't pronounce Bongila. In fact, <laughs> you were butter but bloody chip pan, weren't you, Vaughan? I was, no two ways. And so, Vaughan, would you like to tell me and Dennis and Michael and Gonzo what exactly happened when you awoke this morning? <clears throat> I got up to find that my wife had prepared two fried eggs, which, as you know, lurk in my guts. Gut. So instead of concealing them in my car coat pocket, as per usual, I applied them to the inside of my wife's bra slip, affording her not inconsiderable singeing to the bust region. When she pointed this out, I replied that it was of little interest to me since we had not had intimacy since the power cuts of 1971. <laughs> And even on that occasion, I could recollect no satisfactory conclusion. This is heartwarming stuff, Vaughan. Go on. I asked my boss for a rise. On his refusal, I removed his clothing and filed him under B for birthday suit. Go on. I have lost my job. I face several charges of manslaughter. In fact, there are two plainclothes policemen waiting in the corridor. You have totally ruined my life. And I now feel able to tell you that you are deeply unattractive with all the sexual allure of k pop <laughs> And I now feel obliged to kill you, or at the very least, badly maim you. Bloody great, Vaughan. Only next time, tweak me nose hairs and then throw me through a window. OK, everybody, take five. 